And man, who was a big part of that wrecking ball, athletic director J.D. Wicker, back with us here on Extra. Mr. Wicker, good morning. How are you? I am well, gentlemen. How are y'all doing? We're doing good. Uh, good. Do you have any say about the content uh, on the Aztec Stadium Twitter account? Because it's awesome. The drone footage is incredible. You know, being a 50-year-old dude that really doesn't understand social media, not really. Okay. Um, I allow our uh, our younger, more hip staff to uh, to deal with that. No, it's – um. yeah, we go over it on a Monday morning. We have a social media call, and then we've got uh, a couple of uh, – various companies that we're working with that are helping us from the marketing standpoint. And they put together uh, great information and, you know, great videos and graphics to put out. So, you know, we want to show the community we're serious about this. The stadium's getting built. So having great content on social media is a good way to start. J.D., the news came down yesterday from the uh, a proposed bubble for the NCAA tournament right there smack dab in the middle of the country um, in, in Indiana for March Madness next spring. Is there anything you could update us on as far as the feasibility or the, the prospects of that happening? Uh, you know, I think the, the one thing that we've learned uh, through football season at this point is that you have to be uh, ready to – uh, change what you would normally do to ensure that you can, you know, create an opportunity for our student athletes and our staff to uh, play the games that they so, you know, that they so much want to play. And I think we've also shown that the more you can consolidate travel and keep people in the same place and understand what that bubble kind of looks like, it makes the most sense. So, while it's not going to be uh, a traditional tournament, the fact that we'd get to play a tournament is, you know, going to be most important. Is it confirmed, JD? Do you know? Can you say for certain if it's going to be an Indy or still working towards that? No, I think they're still working towards that. I mean, it makes sense because the Final Four was going to be at Lucas Oil. I'm pretty sure this year, so it kind of makes sense to start with that. And you know, one of the concepts that was floated early on was you know, potentially sites that are within driving distance of Indianapolis. And there's a lot of different, uh, you know, major cities within a couple hours of Indianapolis, you know, if you're on a bus, that you could do some games spread out in different cities and then have everyone converge on Indianapolis, maybe for the for the Sweet 16 or definitely for the Final Four. But we'll wait to see. They've got a lot of folks working on it. And you know, it's it's a heavy lift because it's not just the NCAA basketball tournament; it's the women's tournament, and then it's all the other championships that are going to be held in the spring. Ooh, that is a heavy lift. We had Nick Hardwick on uh, yesterday, JD. He's back there in Indianapolis, and you know, he says you can get across that state in, in three and a half hours. And you think of all the different colleges that you know have Division One facilities, you can kind of say, all right, it's. It's doable, but but the price is it and, and fill me in on this because I do not know. Is it the NCAA that picks up the ticket as far as the uh, the postseason tournament is concerned when you move on to another city? Yeah, so typically the way it works, the NCAA generates the revenue through the TV deal, the marketing deals, and the tickets, and then uh, each individual site pays for the majority of. Uh, hosting through those ticket sales and then the teams have a certain amount of per diem typically it's 75 individuals that the NCAA provides you x amount of money for and that's team but they also band and cheer are part of that so uh, obviously band and cheer probably aren't going to travel this year so those costs come down Usually you incur a little bit of expense because you're going to take a few more than 75, but for the most part, the NCAA picks everything up. So we'll see a reduction in expenses on who's traveling, but there's also the additional cost of testing and all those pieces. Yulia Aztecs basketball right here on Extra 1360, not too far away. J.D., how's it been uh, making that schedule and making sure that you line up some good non-conference games as well? Well, it's, you know, Matt Soria, our director of basketball operations, is fantastic at getting the scheduling piece done. It has been uh, a puzzle this year, more than typical. The same on our women's side with uh, John Silver, who's the Dobo for women's basketball. Uh, You know, doing the same thing, trying to find the appropriate games to make sure your non-conference schedule is strong enough. Uh, to create that opportunity for a um, for a, a bid, if you don't win the conference tournament, and I think we've put together a 
phenomenal non-conference schedule and the conference schedule is going to come out a little later this morning just got a chance to really look at that so um I, it lays out pretty well um so we're, we're just excited to be able to tip off basketball what a week from tomorrow against ucla God, cannot wait excited to see where malachi goes in the uh in the draft tomorrow they the current mock draft that i saw has him going to the milwaukee bucks not a bad landing spot yeah, it's it, you know it's one of those things. It's kind of it snuck up on you that the draft is about to happen. So really excited for Malachi. He's put so much work in. He was such a you know a great Aztec. We would have liked to have seen him have the opportunity to have that run along with the, the rest of the team uh, at the end of last year. But excited for where he's going to land. It shows that you know we're a program that can put guys in the pros. Just look at you know. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, arguably one of the top players in the world, and then Jamal Franklin having great success. So we're excited for Malachi, and you know wherever he lands, the mock draft I saw this morning was the 76ers. So uh, with any of those, you really have to wait and see what happens t- tomorrow night. JD, I'm looking at my uh, weather map right now. I it looks like all sunny skies. That uh, stadium still right on track for September of 2022. Yeah, we, uh, we met yesterday with uh, the construction principals and the folks on our campus, and everything is, for the stadium standpoint, is moving along uh, really well. We're really excited about where we're at. Um, so, yeah, and the, the old stadium's starting to come down, as y'all were talking about leading in. So we're excited to see that process uh, continue to happen. It's, yeah, we're 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 pushing towards fall of 2022 and excited for not only Aztec football, but we're starting to hear from a lot of other, uh, you know, concert promoters and other types of sporting events and things like that, that are just trying to understand what our timeline is and kind of as COVID dies down and we understand vaccine and all those different things and people are going to start putting it on the schedule. There's an interest in uh, Aztec stadium. Looks like there was some uh, heavy demo going on with those seats yesterday. Are, are, Seats available to purchase if people are still looking to get a, a piece of memorabilia of the old stadium? Yeah, we've been working with the demo company, and that information is going to come out shortly. It's it's taken a little longer than we wanted to to get all the different uh, contracts in place, working with you know various uh, entities. But that information should be coming out shortly, uh, the ability to purchase seats. Uh, there will also be um, an auction opportunity with different signage and different pieces from the stadium. So that should be out here shortly with the goal of allowing people to, uh, you know, purchase and have before Christmas if it's a Christmas gift that they want to give. Oh, that's a good idea. It'll yeah. probably be via web, I'm assuming, that you'll just have these things up online that people can go bid on. Yep. It'll be uh, on a website and the seat you'll just be able to purchase. It'll start with, uh, you know, our Aztec club members and people who have been season ticket holders in the past will have first opportunity to purchase. Um, and there'll be, it'll be a little bit of a process. You have to purchase the seat and then you have to purchase uh, basically feet for the seat because they're the way they're attached to the wall. You're going to have to buy another piece of uh, another uh, piece of equipment to then, attach the seats to so that you can actually use them at your house but that should be a fairly simple process uh through the purchase opportunity yeah, everyone has a drill no problem drill <laughs> it yeah yeah it's also attached to an eight thousand pound chunk of cement but sh- cement drill it cares. <laughs> just drill a hole in it jd always appreciate it man thank you very much Absolutely, guys. Costa, happy belated birthday. And Thank you, sir. Fletch, uh, I hope you survived the weekend, and <laughs> they've got you in a, a big plastic bubble right now, kind yes. of like Bubble Boy on Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, we hope to never come in close contact with them ever again, J.D., so <laughs> we appreciate you. How's the family? Thanks. How's the family doing? Uh, we're doing great. Just dropped everybody off at school this morning. We're very fortunate. Scarlett's and our seven-year-old's in school uh, five days a week, and then Waverly, the Almost three-year-old goes to preschool three mornings a week. So mom's really happy. Yeah, you're so lucky. Ours is home. Mm. <laughs> and I love him to death. But you, how's the how's the dog? The dog is doing well. She's still a puppy, so it's uh, she likes to jump. She's very energetic. It's uh, it's it, it, it's kind of funny. Waverly, our two-year-old. When Kona comes running down the hall, she just presses up against the wall so Kona doesn't <laughs> knock her down. So we're hopefully, hopefully we haven't scarred her for life with that. But Make a hole! It's, uh, it's fun. That's good.
So how's your little one, Justin? You know what, JD? Now? No, no, no. We, he'll be seven months in oh, wow. uh, three days. Okay. Um, and he crawled for the first time yesterday. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, his first real crawl. I mean, you know, he, he's been doing this thing where he can he can belly crawl and he can kind of go backwards, but actually knees up under him. You know, all four being able to crawl. Yesterday was the first day, and we have a ninety-five pound dog, so. He's in okay. deep S when he starts standing. Like he is yeah. in real trouble. He's gonna get Ray Lewis, uh, you know, before uh, on a football field, not otherwise. But you know what I mean. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally understand. We had a, a ninety pound lab before we had our current puppy, and he definitely depleted Scarlet, our oldest, a couple times. And, you know, we just like all that's right, what I'm I was looking for. <laughs> Rub some dirt on it, JD. All the best. We look forward to seeing you soon. All right, guys, I appreciate it much. Go ahead, Thanks, yeah. J.D.